year when we do our next national, there's massive leaflets, go back to your communities, your schools, your colleges, your workplace, your neighbours, the street next to you, the street behind you. Give out leaflets, talk to people, tell people what's going on in Cambridge because a lot of people don't know. And next time, if every, I mean, the, the turnout today is fantastic, it's amazing. And if everybody goes away and brings one more person next time, the numbers will swell. Because today, we are sending that loud message to Cambridge University. We will not allow this to be built. We will stop it at all costs. Now, what I would say to you, on the march, we want it as loud and as proud as possible. Get your air horns, get your whistles, get your megaphones, and more than anything, these primates, they cannot speak for themselves, but they have a voice. They have our voice, and we will never, ever turn our backs on them and walk away and leave them. I'd now like to introduce Mel Broughton from the Speak campaign. Hi there everyone, it's brilliant to see everyone here today. It's an amazing turnout and a testament to how this campaign is shaping up. It's just absolutely brilliant to see you all out there. And together, we will stop this. It's about unity, it's about standing together, it's about making sure this horrendous, awful thing never happens in this city. I would ask you all now to get behind the banner and we'll start the demonstration. And please march and remember why you're here. You've seen the video, you know what this is about. So let's be disciplined, let's be dignified, but let's send this message to Cambridge University that we will not let this go ahead.
Darling. She's a local lady from the Cambridge group. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I don't need much introduction from the people around here, do I? This is my town. This is where I was born. This was where I was bred. This is where I was educated. And I used to be so proud to come from such a marvellous town. Now, that pride is really smirched with guilt and horror at what goes on. I got into this movement years and years ago. Many years ago, when my mother was a little girl, she can remember her mother taking her to Downing Street. Downing Street over there. My mum is 89, and her mother said to her, this is where they hurt the animals. She said, I don't know how we can stop it, but this is where they hurt them. My mum at 89 still remembers that. And as children, and then as a teenager and a young adult, I didn't know what I could do. But then I got into this movement and I found out what I could do. And people laughed at us. They laughed because they thought we were all fluffy. We thought animals were fluffy. It's nothing about that, is it? We believe that animals are sentient creatures and they have a right to the only thing they own, which is their life. As Dawn has just said, for years and years we've been campaigning. We do it through all possible means available and we hope this government would give us some help. But as it hasn't, we've looked for other reasons why this, lab, this animal experimentation is so bad. And now we find, over the last two decades, doctors and scientists have been with us. Now here we have the ammunition we need. Just inside the tent, we've been doing the animal aid stall with the EFMA, which is Europeans for Medical Advancement. Here's Ray Greek's book. Buy it. Everything you need to know about the harm these experiments are doing to people is in here. Lists and lists of terrible things done to animals, but drugs passed, procedures passed, people then have been given these drugs, have had these operations, and they have been harmed, if not killed. In this country alone, 70,000 people die each year from adverse drug reactions. Now, that's one hell of a figure. It doesn't seem much when you say it quickly, but if it was your mother or your brother or your sister or your child who was one of those people, by golly, even if you don't like animal rights, for ethical reasons, for goodness sake, we have to say to people, think about it for scientific reasons. 70,000 is too many. All these drugs were given in good faith by doctors trying to help their patients. And they cannot even rely on those as being okay. <laughs> Dr. Greek is going to be on Channel 4 News tonight at 6.30. Now, I know you can't get back home in time, but you maybe can give someone a call to get them to video it. He's in America. He's driving one and a half hours to get to the studio in California to do this really important link up. Make sure that somebody records it for you. Buy his book. Get the leaflets. They're all in there. Our local group, we're still strong. We were the ones who began it, Escape. Do you know, we had a tip-off from a doctor. How about that? A doctor gave us the initial tip-off about this place they wanted to build. But we couldn't find it. We could find no documents about it. We couldn't find the site. 